afternoon and welcome to this sort of cloudy but muggy, uh, in fact cut the atmosphere with a knife sort of afternoon here at Juma Private Game Reserve you are watching on Safari. Well, you are, like I say, you're watching On Safari, which is our little highlights show that shows you the highlights of the last 24 hours, of which there seem to have been only four. And so that's going to mean that I have to talk quite a lot during the course of the next half an hour and possibly show you some photographs that we've taken. Uh, well, not only over the course of the last 24 hours, but over the last little while indeed. I'm just opening up my body language to you. I hope that you're all having a good afternoon or morning, wherever you happen to be on planet Earth. And please remember this is entirely live. We'd love to hear from you. You can talk to us using the hashtag Wild Earth on the Tweet Tweet. Alternatively, you can use the chat stream on YouTube or on our website or on our app. Uh, if you're very desperate, you can attempt to send a carrier pigeon. I would not, however, use the Postal Service of South Africa, which has ceased to exist, sadly. That was a moment of silence for the death of the post office. OK, um, we seem to have a few audio issues at the moment with our... And if we can't hear anything, uh, well, then they'll tell me and I'll just narrate over the clip. That's a good idea. So, Nadine, if we can't hear, I'll just narrate over the clip. Here we go. Uh, yes, wow, wow, wow. We have located on a two beautiful rhinos. And uh, they are pretty much lying at a pan here as you can see a little bit of water just to the right of them but they're lying in the water so we can't really see the where the water ends there but uh, they are keeping nice and cool for a very hot afternoon so the one that's closest to us is a older female quite an old female and then the one that's situated at the back end is a young female so both females oh look look she's gonna get up she's Yes, looks like the young female just got up. I wonder if she's going to go maybe a little bit further into the water for to cool down a little bit more of her body because I don't think she's really kind of getting the entire body wet. Come on. Yes, you can do it. She's looking. She's like, mm, should I go a little bit deeper there? Shouldn't I? Well, if I was her, I would just plonk down right there in the water because I'm very, very jealous of them actually having a little bit of cool time. Cool pool time. Unfortunately, rhinos cannot go into really deep water because they can't lift their heads up. Uh, so they will actually drown. So because you can see the head is pretty much slanted downwards. Main reason for that is that they can at least uh, graze on uh, grass with not, without putting too much effort into it. So the heads are very held down very, very low. And uh, if you go into too much water or too deep water, that becomes a problem. Oh, she's getting up. Hello. Yes, uh, I just wanted to say a huge thank you to Huffins Middle School in Texas, the U.S. of A., for joining us on our kids drive this afternoon thank you so much for all the questions that you sent through to us it has been wonderful i'm hoping that we could answer as many as possible and uh yeah and give you a little bit of insight on what we do and where we are yay see that girl you're up and about now what are you gonna do you're just gonna reposition yourself maybe look for another spot to go and lie down Oh, not even the young female's up. All right, hold on. Looks like uh, both of them are up now. Now you can see she's half. <laughs> she's got a two-tone, a two-tone color going there for her.
Now, with any luck, that rhinoceros female should, in fact, be pregnant, the little one. That was the one we saw mating about, I can't even remember when it was. It must have been about eight weeks ago, eight to ten weeks ago, I guess. And uh, whether she is aware of a small rhino growing inside her, I'm not sure. She looked quite young, I thought, to be a first-time mum. But, you know, we actually don't know a massive amount about wild rhino mating. And so it's possible... Um, that she is pregnant and it's possible that um, she isn't and that you know that mating was a sort of failed attempt Diane in the UK thank you very much you say that um, you say that it's nice to have my dry sense of humor thank you very much I do attempt to be dryly humorous from time to time that was a comedic pause for effect did you see that panda Panda is on camera this afternoon. Um, I was looking up and doing a little bit of reading earlier today about Rhino when I saw that we were going to do this clip and I thought there's been a lot of questions or there have been a lot of questions around whether or not the dehorning of Rhino has caused behavioral differences and I found quite a nice study uh, that they did and it was done in Botswana where there are not a lot of Rhino left and they were going to dehorn a group of rhino. I wouldn't describe it as the most extensive study I've ever read, but it is a it is a kind of scientific study. And for a month prior to a group of I think eight rhino being dehorned, their behaviours and various kinds of or aspects of their behaviour were observed. And then a month post their dehorning, those same behaviours were observed. And in particular, they had a look at aggressive interactions affiliative interactions, in other words, interactions where the rhino are displaying some kind of social bonding, and then also on their feeding and kind of their movements and that sort of stuff. And there was no significant difference between the behavior of the horned and dehorned rhinos. And these are the same two group, or it's the same group of rhino that they have observed twice over the course of two months, one before the dehorning and one post the dehorning. So I think that's really interesting because a lot of people have said, well, you know, you're going to completely change the way a rhino operate. Um, they're always naysayers. And it really doesn't seem to be the case. I'm sure there are some differences. I'm sure a rhino would much rather have its horn. But I do think it's very important to note how effective it has been, the dehorning, in terms of reducing rhino poaching. I don't think we can fail to acknowledge that. I still find it actually quite, um, I find it quite difficult to understand why people involved in rhino conservation, some of them still think that dehorning is a bad idea, especially as the horns will eventually grow back. Uh, nice question here from Giraffe Girl, who says, thanks. Oh, for visiting the new vehicles on the Sunrise Safari. Thank you very much for that, giraffe girl. Now, uh, I think we'll probably move on to our next clip, if that's okay. And then we'll possibly have a look at a few photographs post that. Here we go. Are you ready? A one, a two, a three. Thank you, thank you, Chad. Uh, we are sitting here with a black-headed heron. A pretty cool bird, but also a ferocious one. Well, I'm waiting for him to do his little dance. I suspect he's hunting. He's found himself outside the midden of a possible mouse field mice and you see how he's moving his neck like that because obviously the wind is blowing and if he stands still then whatever it is that he's stalking will notice that he's not moving anymore look at him doing this little wiggle ah, almost like a, a mantis I'm sorry not a mantis a mantid almost like a mantid in the wind uh, chameleons also do this Now, when I say they're ferocious, I mean, he'll gobble up a mouse, no problem. Get it, get it, get it. Oh, oh. 
Oh, he got a mouse. Look at that. No ways. No, my goodness. I had thought that this is what he was doing. Watch this. Now, this is the fascinating part. Oh. No, don't stop walking. Don't walk away. Here we go. Mouses. Somewhat still alive, but not for long. Ah, uh, uh, my apologies. It's a radio. Oh my goodness, gone. He's got a little bulge in his neck. <laughs> you need to wash that down with some water. Well done. Hello. <laughs> That's an astonishing thing to see, those that black-headed heron. I don't know what kind of rodent it was. Uh, it was a mouse of some description. But when Eric says mouse there, it's like most guides. When they see a small hamster-like animal being caught or you see one, you normally say, oh, bushveld gerbil, safe in the knowledge that nobody else will have been able to A, see it fast enough, or B, contradict you because so few people know the difference. Uh, between the rodents out here. Now, what I wanted to do was tell you a little bit about the black-headed heron and what it likes to eat, because its diet it can be described as Catholic in the extreme. In other words, it eats just about anything that it can overpower that happens to be made of meat. And in fact, that is seems to be the case with many kind of meat-eating birds. So I'm just I'm going to read you this list because it's really quite impressive. In the Eastern Cape, which is obviously from there, uh, the food was identified from pellets, so rather like um, owls, they cough up indigestible stuff, and that's, you can quite easily identify, well, you can relatively easily identify what they eat from those pellets. And they have included this in one season, earthworms, beetle larva, scorpion, centipede, river frog, agama, cape legless skink, giant legless skink, cape skinks, nestling bird, eight unidentified, eight common mole rats, one flay rat, one mouse, and one shrew. There was the mouse. And during the following breeding, breeding season, the diet was similar, except that the striped mouse was replaced by the common mole rat as the major mammal component. So while that was a spectacular sighting uh, of the heron eating the mouse, it was, in fact, uh, it's probably quite unusual, I think, that you'll find that they're eating prey that size. If you are a driven nature enthusiast with a background in communications, then this message is for you. Wild Earth is calling for volunteers to moderate our web and social media chat platforms during our live broadcasts. Do you keep up with the latest trends on social media? Do you have quick fingers and a sharp eye? Then we're looking for you. To apply, email your CV to us at jobs at wildearth.tv. Join the Wild Earth team today. Wild Earth, connecting with nature.
Right, welcome back to those of you who've just rejoined us. We're going to send you 50 meters across that away to have a quick chat with um, Chad to find out what his plans are this afternoon. Hello, hello everybody and welcome, welcome back to Amakala Private Game Reserve. We're here with myself, Eric, your naturalist this afternoon. So this morning we had a bit of a, a chasing game. We were trying to chase the elephant herd uh, so that we could get a little bit of this for them and we only got bums. So this afternoon we're going to try again, but we're going to take a different approach. We are going to see if we can't try and find some cats for cat a day. So the plan is to go and see if we can't see if the three amigos are around and ready to be seen and if not then we will quickly pop across to the main reserve where the lions are and see if maybe the lions are about other than that if we can't find the lions there's always elephants there's rhinos there's giraffe there's planes game we will definitely try and find something so i look forward to seeing you this afternoon and uh, well we see you out there Righty, that's Eric's plans. Good luck with the three amigo cheetahs. I'd like to see some three amigo cheetahs here. I think it's unlikely, so we'll probably start looking for some leopards. A couple of questions. Uh, somebody said, who was this? Uh, somebody was going to ask, or asked about these binoculars. How the new Crafty Jacks, you said, how the new binoculars panning out? Uh, very well, thank you. The Pro It Up binoculars, which you can uh, buy at proitup.com. And if you put in the promo code WILDEARTH30, you'll get a discount. Tell them I sent you. Well, don't. Just put in the promo code. That'll probably work much better. And uh, then a nice comment about cameras. So we were having a look at some pictures in the advert break. And a question about... She's coming, or this leopard lover is coming to Africa in 2026 and she so says she's interested in photography. Can I recommend a camera and a lens? It just depends on what you want to do. It's not a simple thing. If you're going to spend time editing your photographs and you're going to really get into it, then something like this is a really nice kind of uh, setup. It's a sort of prosumer uh, body with a 200-600 lens. It's not going to break the bank. It's not a cheap setup, but it's certainly not the most expensive. If you're not going to edit your photos, if you're just going to use them as as is out of the camera, uh, you can go as simple as literally a pair of binoculars like this with a cell phone attachment. They actually make that, these guys. Or you can get, I would get, um, I think it's called a Sony RX, RX which is a fixed lens. Um, and it won't, it'll take you very nice photographs and you don't need, it's, it's really quite compact. Um, you're not going to get the same quality as you do out of a camera like this, but if you're not going to spend time editing, that Sony RX setup is a really good one for Safari. Okay, let's move on to another clip. I think we're going to move straight to the Dewey the Hippo clip because I want to show you a picture that I took of him earlier. And... Uh, let me just... Yeah, here we go. Okay, here we go. Can you believe it? Look at that panda. It's Dewey the Hippo. He's got a stick and he's playing with it. How oh, wonderful. <laughs> now, for those of you who don't know, this is a famous wild earth hippopotamus on the count of the fact that he likes to play with sticks. I can find no evidence of any other hippo anywhere else that has such a habit. And he's now giving us a nice display. That's fantastic to see. 
A very interesting little clip there of Dewey, and I thought maybe I would take the opportunity to use this map for the first time because I basically feel like showing you the map. And here is where we were at Treehouse Dam. And we're often asked, where are you and what are you doing and where you're going? And, uh, you know, I thought it was quite interesting to show that he was over there. And we've seen him in our in the dam near camp, for your Taylor Dam. Uh, I don't think we've seen him at Biffles Hook Dam, which is up here. And then we have probably also seen him down here at Twin Dams, I think. So he, he kind of goes between the water holes here at Juma. Oh, how time flies when you're having fun. Daylight saving time for the US and Europe has arrived. The 10th of March will see the US shift an hour forward, and the 31st of March will see Europe and the UK also shift an hour forward. Stay connected to nature from wherever you are in the world. Go to our website to find out more. Don't miss a moment with Wild Earth. <laughs> uh, welcome back to those who've just rejoined us. Uh, Lenny was asking if Cedric is okay. Uh, Lenny, there is no conspiracy. Uh, there is no emergency. There is no disaster. Cedric hasn't been removed from the planet by aliens. Uh, he hasn't been removed from Juma. I've just come in with some guests and uh, we're taking some drives and Cedric will be back tomorrow morning. Don't worry, Lenny. You can breathe easy. <laughs> It's all okay. Okay, um, and then, Picky, you say, since 2018, Dewey's been playing with the stick. So, I mean, that's for six years this animal's been playing with the stick. He's not young anymore. He's maybe not quite as big as he'll get, but he's certainly not a youngster. Um, James, you seem to have got faster on the camera trigger, says Shivant. Thank you, yes, uh, slightly faster. I used to describe myself as the slowest photographer in the wilderness uh, but yes I do think uh, I've got slightly faster well the equipment's probably got quite a lot faster as well um, I'm just looking through a few more questions here uh, there's a couple of comments around that um, amazing rodent hunt and some of you saying it's nice to see a live hunt it is it depends I suppose on the amount of detail you have to deal with Welcome back to those of you who've just rejoined us. We're going to send you across, this time it really is for real, 50 meters to where Chad 
and Mpo are getting ready for drive. Welcome everybody. Um, thanks very much James and this afternoon we're going to be out and about in Wendy with myself Chad and Paul on camera and our plan this afternoon is to see if we can find any of those elusive cats. I'm not going to say the word just because the last couple of days I have said that word and we haven't had any luck but this afternoon it is quite overcast here on Juma so I am hoping that there will be a little bit of movement with those animals. We'll spend a lot of time down in the southern parts of Juma and see what we can find. But also James is going to be out also a little bit later, so the more the merrier, and hopefully we are able to track down one of those elusive cats successfully. Time before the end of this show and I found a rather interesting little insect sitting on this microscope not on the microscope on a flower outside and I wanted there it is I wanted to try and examine it with you under the microscope so I'm going to load up the microscope feed Luyanda I wouldn't go immediately to the microscope feed because I may make a mess of it yes indeed I have done so now and there you can see a little beetle burrowing in to life in this acacia or vichilia flower. Isn't that cool? I don't know what kind of beetle it is. It's probably less than a millimeter long. All right, Luanda, come back to me and I'll try and refind this little beetle. There he is. All right, let's go back to the microscope. And in such amazing detail. Yeah, that little beetle is less than a millimeter long. Absolutely astounding. All right, let's come back to me and we'll have a take a question from Sandy Franklin. Do you have guests at your camp or is it a base camp for the show only? No, Sandy, it's just for it's just for the show. We have some guests who are um, to do with the show, if you like, uh, visiting us here. Um, James, can we cross to the cam ops from time to time? Good to mix it up. Um, leopard lover, it's very difficult to cross to the cam ops because there are no cameras on them. But that's certainly the purpose of the dash cam. When eventually we get it sorted out properly, you'll be able to see uh, Panda and then Paul and the other cam ops. Uh, Gerrit even. He will definitely fill the frame when we get the dash cam going. Uh, so far, all of the cam, cam ops have actually showed a great enthusiasm for being on camera, which is, which is nice. I have known camera operators who refuse point blank to be on camera. But Panda has worked so hard on his fashion, on his uh, physique in the gym, uh, on his hair since he was born. And, uh, you know, it would be a pity for the world not to be exposed to his, the delights that he brings. All right, I'm going <laughs> to get ready for drive now. We're going to try and find a leopard, as is always my, uh, my goal. We'll see you out there in the field. Thank you for joining us for On Safari. Bye-bye. This program features live coverage of an African safari and may include animal kills and carcasses. Viewer discretion is advised. <laughs>